Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Cam, and welcome back to the AFI Project. Today we're going to be taking a look at Sullivan's Travels. This was directed by Preston Sturgis, and it starred Joel McRae and Veronica Lake, and it was released in 1941. This movie is loosely based on the classic novel Gulliver's Travels, written by Jonathan Swift, and it tells the story of a film director, played by McRae, who is very successful, but Throughout his career, he has only made screwball comedies, and he has become rather dissatisfied with his work. So he vows that for his next project, called Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Yeah, sure, why not that? He decides that he's going to add some weight and some meaning and try and inject some real-world themes into it. And he figures the only way he knows how is to strike out on his own. And so he disguises himself as a homeless man, and goes through a Homerian odyssey of just crap, and he, and he learns to appreciate the work that he has done. The idea for this movie came straight from the mind of Preston Sturgis, who said that most comedies have lost their ability to make us laugh and are more akin to try and, and lecture us. Though it is speculated that Sturgis also was inspired by a man named John Garfield, an author who disguised himself as a hobo and traveled the street, traveled as a homeless man throughout the U.S. in the 1930s. The critical response to this movie was mixed at best. There were some critics that thought it was a work of genius, but then there were others who were just like, I don't get it. Nowadays, this movie has a pretty sterling reputation. It has been regarded as one of the finest movies ever made, and sits at a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. So, middling reception in the past aside, it has gotten better with time, according to most critics. And I gotta be honest, when I heard the plot of this movie for the first time, I was like, Oh no, this is going to be another one of those movies where one of those hoity-toity directors who is like, I shall be among the commoners, gets the big old reality check that, you know, he actually has a pretty good, you know, it just spare me the lecture, will you please? But honestly, I really enjoyed this movie, like, more than I thought so, and I 100% did not think that I would, but... In the words of Dean Harnscrabble from Monsters University, this movie surprised me. My favorite part of the movie was Joel McRae. I'm not 100% familiar with his other work. In my research, I found that he was the main star in Alfred Hitchcock's Foreign Correspondent. I definitely have to check that out now, but he was the heart and soul of the movie. He starts out as like, my movies are crap. Like, they make money, but they're just, they're just, they don't mean anything. And his heart is in the right place. He knows that he knows that he has to leave everything behind and tries his best to be like, you all stay away. I gotta do this on my own. And due to all the crap he has to go through, you do feel sorry for him, but he does have a very satisfying arc that wraps up nicely by the end. He forms a relationship with Veronica Lake, and she's really good. In my research, I found that she started off the shoot of this movie. She was six months pregnant and Preston Sturgis was furious at this news. So basically, a lot of her shots were involving a stunt double, but when Veronica Lake was on screen, she was really good. But I watched this movie for the first time for this review, and when I was watching it, this movie got to a certain scene. It's the scene in which Sullivan is with this prison gang, and he is chained up, and they are going to this one place to watch a picture show. So they're all sitting down, and they're watching this this Mickey Mouse cartoon with, I believe it was called Playful Pluto. And by the start of it, literally everyone is laughing, and Sullivan finds himself laughing, and he starts to turn around, and he's like, wait, is everyone else laughing like I am? It was in this moment where he realizes the epiphany of the matter, in that his comedies may not have been world-changing, but they helped in a different way. That... Life is tough out there, and sometimes we need to distract ourselves by laughing. And Sullivan realized that in that moment. And really, that's the message of this movie, in that, yeah, there's a lot of serious stuff going on in, in the world, and a lot of it is bad. But sometimes you gotta just turn that off and laugh for a few minutes. I think this might be a bold statement, 
But I think this movie accidentally predicted meme culture. Like, take a look around. Like, everything kind of sucks right now. But what keeps a lot of us going is is memes, or at least for me, at least. And I could be totally out-kicking my coverage, but in terms of the message of this movie, it is very relevant in 2021. And the message being, life sucks out there, and sometimes you gotta laugh. There's nothing wrong with that. And kind of a spoiler for the end of this movie, but essentially Sullivan is like, I'll make my next picture, but I'm just going to make it a straightforward comedy, because... People need to laugh sometimes. And I thought it was great. And at the end of the day, I think this movie has aged tremendously well. Going into it, I was just ready to just not like it. But I was surprised. And that is all for me, guys. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Next time on the AFI Project, we're jumping way ahead into the 1970s to take a look at the first movie from some guy you all might have heard of. His name is George Lucas. No, it's not Star Wars, it's American Graffiti. But if you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, and if you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to allow notifications. That way, when a new video drops, you will be the first to know about it. My name is Ryan Cam, I'll see you in the next one.